Well, let us talk about uh, an example of ethical naturalism. Uh, now, if you look at the screen, we have something called uh, emotivism. Now, we have been talking about ethical naturalism and ethical naturalism as you would remember was uh, uh, understanding moral uh, or ethical judgments in terms of non-ethical judgments. So, this happens to be the crucial defining of ethical naturalism. So, there is a domain of ethical judgments, which is uh, which can be understood in terms of non-ethical judgments. Now, this was the basis of ethical naturalism. Now, what could be examples of ethical naturalism? We have slightly talked about uh, uh, utilitarianism as an example of ethical naturalism. Today, we are going to explore another example of ethical uh, uh, naturalism, which is called emotivism. Now, emotivism as you would figure out comes from the uh, root emotion or something to do with emotion. Now, we need to understand whether emotions are, uh, what are emotions and what is emotivism as a moral theory, which lays on a foundation of uh, ethical naturalism. Let me briefly uh, remind you of the uh, categorization that we have. Well, the most fundamental layer is metaethics and on top of it would be moral theory. and on top of it is applied ethics. So, analogically this can be seen a, as a three layered uh, uh, format or framework in our moral thinking. The bottom layer is metaethics, which is the foundational and on top of that is built the uh, moral theory and depending on the moral theory, we have uh, answers to applied questions. Now, ethical naturalism is a form of metaethics. The example of a moral theory is emotivism. It can be anything that you would like or any theory that stands on ethical naturalism and applied ethics is, is stealing wrong. How do you answer this question? So, if I answer yes, then this is an applied ethical question. Okay. Now, having known this, uh, let us go ahead and explore what is emotivism. Well, uh, what are emotions? Emotions are something that we feel. Now, if emotions are uh, feelings, we know that uh, we are introspectively aware of them. Now, uh, if emotions are can be uh, barely understood as uh, feelings and how are we aware of them? We are introspectively aware of them. So, you would yourself know whether you are happy or unhappy about a particular thing. Now, let us uh, imagine, uh, how do we sort a moral question or a, an ethical question? Suppose, the question that we asked in the applied ethics level that well, is uh, uh, stealing wrong? Now, uh, various moral theories have various answers to it. Uh, now, in the uh, ambit of ethical naturalism, there is this th a moral theory called emotivism. Let us see what does emotivism say about it. Well, emotivism very simply put uh, is saying that value judgments are dependent on the emotions that they, uh, ex uh, uh, that they bring forth. So, this is basically what is emotivism. So, we take, we can understand emotivism is value judgments are determined by 
by emotions or the feelings and as we will further explore, they are uh, useful only to incite further emotions or feelings. Now, uh, le uh, let us pay attention on the first part of the uh, claim. The first part of the claim is that value judgments are determined by emotions and feelings. Now, is that the case? Now, let us think over it for a certain time that well, if uh, you are posed with a question, uh, a value question, how do you decide whether it is, uh, how do you answer it? Well, how many of you reason, how many of you look at the benefit that it brings along, how many of you uh, uh, would like to uh, be, be a Kantian and uh, conceive whether it is universalizable, how many of you would be, would be uh, follow the utilitarian uh, way and evaluate or assess how much net happiness does it bring along. Or if somebody answers that stealing is wrong because I do not feel good about it or I feel bad about it, uh, it, it, it uh, brings about a negative reaction in me, I, I am uh, disdained by the concept of uh, stealing or whenever I hear something stealing. Uh, Let us go back uh, uh, and uh, re-examine the example that we talked about. Suppose x is killing y, now that is a statement of fact, but what makes uh, x, x uh, killing of y a wrong act or a value judgment of uh, on this act is well the, the emotion that this such an act uh, brings forth in the uh, agent. So, if I am an observer and I see that x is killing y and I just have uh, um, negative reactions to it, I do not like it, I feel bad about it, I have a bad emotional uh, response to it, then for me that is wrong. Now, if I were, if I am an emotivist, I would reason it this way. Why would, uh, you could uh, uh, perhaps uh, look around and to find that many people would say that well, if you ask uh, uh, Mother Teresa or if you ask any social worker that why do you enjoy doing social work or why do you uh, choose social work. Now, apart from pragmatic necessities, if at a deeper level people are interested uh, because perhaps someone would answer that well, because it is my duty to uh, help the less uh, 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 privileged, well that is a part of duty ethics. But if someone just says that I uh, do social work because I like it, now this is it an is it a, a explanation or not, how would you count it? Now, take a look at the question. Now, if the question is, if x is any act, x is right, because I feel good about it, would you consider this? Mm, as a justification for the act being good or many of us would perhaps consider that well, it is a side effect of the right act that well, I do something good or uh, x is right, uh, not because I feel good about it, but x is right, therefore I feel good about it. Now, if I term this as statement 1 and statement 2, now if you are uh, in support of statement 1, well then uh, you are an emotivist. If you are in uh, support of statement 2 or you understand uh, right uh, from uh, some other reason and feeling good about it is only a consequence of it, then you are not an emotivist. So, this is an example of an emotivist this is not 
and emotivist. So, we see that well uh, any act is right because I feel good about it and likewise any act is wrong because I feel bad about it. Now, let us uh, imagine another example. Say if we are uh, we see a, a person stealing and if we feel bad about it that makes it uh, wrong and if we feel good about it that makes it right. So, what is the conclusion that can be drawn from this is well values or value judgments are expression of the agent's emotional reaction. So, this basically sums up that well what is meant by uh, value judgments uh, uh, by emotivism that value judgments are uh, expressions of um, the agent's emotional reaction. Now, if you agree with this well then you are an emotivist. Now, you might ask the question that well if uh, value judgments or ethics is uh, uh, is subservient to uh, feelings and human feelings where is the objectivity. So, this is a question what about ethical objectivity the same act act x for agent p agent q and agent r can have different uh, ethical values. So, for someone it could be right, for someone it could be wrong and for someone it could be well uh, without any uh, uh, moral consequence. So, we can call it amoral. Now, having uh, these three possibilities that the same act can and depending on the agent have different uh, uh, judgments. So, where what can we have an objective judgment about x? Well, the question uh, the answer for most emotivists would be well, no, nothing trans agent that is, let me put that again clearly. So, um, value judgments then become uh, a consequence of the agent. So, if the agent is uh, having a positive reaction to it, the action is right. If he is having a negative reaction to it, the action is wrong and if the agent does not have a value reaction to it, can call it as amoral. Well then, what use are more uh, value judgments? That is a valid question that we could ask. Now, let us look at it this way. If we find that well uh, there are uh, uh, there is a dilemma there is a value dilemma and some of uh, the people uh, choose to be emotivists and say that well whatever reaction we have to it that determines the uh, value judgment of that reaction to it. So, whatever emotional reaction we have. So, a social worker says that I feel good about social working. So, I do social work. Uh, 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 a selfish person would say that I feel good about being selfish therefore, I am selfish. A selfless person would say that I feel good about being selfless and bad about being selfish. So, I am selfless. So, how can we judge the other? Yes, this definitely uh, uh, tends to fall into the, the domain of uh, emotional uh, or of uh, ethical relativism that well 
then there is no objective criteria. What some philosophers have tried to go ahead and uh, build a system to justify emotivism is that well our basic moral apparatus as human beings remains the same and thereof uh, we do have a standard emotional response to a situation. So, compassion is uh, for instance, a compassion is a standard reaction. So, feeling uh, uh, bad or having a negative emotional response to somebody else's suffering is perhaps something that is a part of our uh, frame, uh, framework of approaching the world. And therefore, we do not like suffering and uh, others suffering and therefore, we have uh, we think that suffering is bad even for the other where it is not uh, for the self. So, this uh, is kind of a postulation of a universal human nature and therefore, a universal human uh, reaction is a possible justification of uh, uh, emotivism. So, if you take a look one of the justifications uh, run up is universal human nature which leads to standard emotional reactions again which leads to common values. This could be a justification of emotivism. So, this emotivism as objective. Well, but this is a weak uh, justification from more than one angles, because how do we postulate a universal human nature or how do we uh, thereof build the standard human emotional reaction, because by, by very definition our emotional reactions are uh, determining uh, values. So, they are more fundamental than values. So, uh, an implicit claim here is in emotivism is that emotions more fundamental than values. Now, if this is the case that emotionals are more fundamental than values, then emotivism holds the case. Well, then uh, let us tackle this question again. What use are value judgment? One is very much justified in asking utility of value judgments as per emotivism. Well, emotivists have tried to answer this question by saying, well, it is. If you would remember the second part of the definition that we talked about, uh, the definition of emotivism that we talked about to incite similar emotion and therefore, consequent action. So, emotivists have uh, uh, said that uh, value judgments are nonsensical, because they have no truth value. But are a kind of necessary nonsense. Now, how does this make sense? Well, uh, let us say, what is the utility of value judgments? Well, as per emotivism, value judgments incite similar emotion as the emotion felt by the agent, emotion of approval or disapproval. And therefore, that brings about a consequent action. Now, value judgments are nonsensical, that is, they have no truth value, but are kind of a necessary nonsense. Why a necessary nonsense? Okay. Uh, before we uh, let us handle the question one by one. 
Now, let us say, let us look at it this way now. Let us say if a, a, um, a, a soldier before a final battle charge is addresses his fellow soldiers or his subordinates. Well, that is a very inspiring speech generally. What does it inspire? Where we talk about freedom, they talk about uh, justice, about fairness, about uh, martyrdom. Now, this justification or this speech uh, from the emotivist perspective is just an emotivist judgment and the uh, leader feels that way and the purpose of this emotivist speech is to incite such a feeling in the subordinate soldiers, so that the entire team performs to the best of their ability. So, it is irrelevant that uh, for the uh, leader or uh, that uh, whatever he says is true or false uh, in the world out there, but what matters is that it, uh, it incites the other subordinates to go ahead for a battle charge. So, that is the justification that uh, emotivists give. So, yes, the statement of the uh, leader is nonsensical or because it does not have any truth value, it are mere exhortations. It is an appeal uh, which is not verifiable, but it is necessary because it brings about similar emotional reaction to the uh, in the in the listeners. Now, this example could be put forth into poetry, into uh, songs of valor, poems of valor, of, uh, of movies and uh, any kind of an uh, when one agent tries to influence the other agent, their value judgments are of a certain utility. That emotivism, uh, that uh, value judgments are emotional reactions incites that there should be uh, the followers or the subordinates to go ahead for another action. Now, this is what emotivists have called the, uh, the uh, thrust or the uh, utility of value judgments. Now, so uh, this we see as an example of uh, value uh, emotivism, value judgments being emotional, emotive, but necessary nonsense because they exhort action. So, this happens to be the utility of uh, emotivism. Now, emotivism was a kind of ethical non-naturalism. Now, I would like you to uh, think that well, we have talked about ethical naturalism. What could be the um, weapons or arsenal in the hands of the ethical non-naturalist? Now, if you are an ethical naturalist, we could be you could be an emotivist, you could be a utilitarian, you could be uh, any any uh, um, you could hold any theory which has an empirical correlate. But if you are a non-naturalist, then what? Then what you have in your ambit? If what does the ethical non-naturalist have in his arsenal. Now, that is a question that you must wonder about that well, perhaps whatever we meant by ethical naturalism is almost synonymous, but not totally with what is empirically available to us. Empirically or you can understand it clearly as experientially. Now, what is available from experience? Now, what is a, a dilemma or a moral question that experience gives it to us, but what is the uh, solution? How do we arrive at that? Now, if we do not have a naturalistic or empiricistic uh, reaction pattern, how do we determine what is right or wrong? If it is not reasons, if it is not feelings, then what is uh, in the arsenal of ethical uh, non-naturalist to make uh, value judgments. So, we will look at ethical non-naturalism uh, as a meta-ethical claim now.